today. We thank you for strength today. Thank you for the activity of our limbs. And now, God, here we are in the name of Jesus. And we thank you for blessing us to see another day. We thank you for being God all by yourself. There's none like you in all of the earth. The heavens declare thy glory, and the firmament show forth the work of your hands. Lord, we just want to thank you. Thank you for having us on, on your mind today. Thank you for giving us life and health and strength. Thank you for giving us a mind to want to come into your house today and to give you the glory and all of the honor. That's none like you in all of the earth. Great is the Lord. Great is the Lord. Great is the Lord. He's greatly to be praised. Come on and tell him thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for life today. Thank you for strength today. And now, God, we ask you in the name of Jesus to move by your spirit up and down the aisles on this morning. Bless us with your presence. Thank you for your word that you're going to give to us today. Thank you for opening up our minds to receive what you have for us today. Thank you for your son, Jesus, who died on the cross. Thank you for the blood that was shed out on Calvary. Thank you for giving us eternal life. Thank you for giving us a new mind. Thank you for giving us a new spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on and tell him thank you. Thank you for keeping us all during the week. Thank you for keeping us safe from the evil that is in the world. Thank you for our families. Thank you for our homes. Thank you for our jobs. Thank you for our minds. Thank you, Jesus. Come on and tell him thank you. Hey, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And now we ask for you to bless the man of God on today. Continue to bless his going out. Continue to bless his coming in. Thank you for giving us a great pastor with the vision that you've given him for the church. And we ask you in all things in the name of Jesus and all of the people said amen and amen. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from which cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither sleep nor slumber. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is the shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth, even from evermore. I have read you Psalm number 121. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers and hearers of his holy word.
Lord. Bless the Lord. Oh my soul.
now time to recite a synopsis of what we believe for the benefit of all of our visitors a synopsis of what we believe is found printed on the inside cover of your church bulletin I will read the opening statement you will read the second statement and we'll continue in like manner until we arrive at the final statement which we'll read together a synopsis of what we believe we believe in one God omnipotent omniscient omnipresent the creator, sustainer of the universe, revealing himself to us in his word as Father, Son, and Holy Ghost Spirit. We believe that through the sin of Adam, the first man, all mankind is under a curse of sin and death and is only saved through the atonement of Jesus Christ, the last Adam. We believe that the church is the body of Christ, therefore every Christian must identify with the church. We believe in the indwelling power of the Holy Ghost in doing and empowering believers to speak with tongues and imparting diverse gifts to the members of the body of Christ. All together, we believe in the final judgment with the resurrection of the righteous to eternal bliss and the wicked to eternal damnation. God bless you.
Well, if you have something to thank him for, take a moment and do that. Oh, we praise your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. We've got so much to thank you for. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Lord, you're just good to us. We praise your name. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, God bless you. You may be seated. Uh, Bishop Finley, come on up to the platform. Amen. Glad to have uh, him visiting with us from New Orleans, Louisiana. Bless you, sir. All right. Yeah. I want to share briefly from the verses of Scripture or those verses of Scripture that uh, we read in the early morning worship. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. On this, the last Sunday of November, which is Thanksgiving month, and as we close out our Thanksgiving series, today we are thanking God for victory through Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, beginning with verse 51. And we'll read from verse 51 through the end of the chapter, which is verse 58. If you have that, say amen. Yes. Come on, let's read. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Well, why don't you just say that? Thank God, Thank God. For, victory. for victory. Amen. Bless you, ushers. I shall not speak to you at any great length. We have our next service at 12 noon, and then this afternoon at 3.30, uh, we ought to go to Pastor Burke, praise temple so we've got an exceedingly full day on today and uh, I hope that you all aren't uh, quite as stuffed with Thanksgiving dinner as our congregation this morning but I'll say to you like I said to them don't expect me to go up there and you down here <laughs> amen I'm going I'm to stay with you uh, amen and uh, if you've had too much thanksgiving from a carnal point of view, then I'll just say a few words to you that'll help you to shout and praise God a little bit later. Amen. But God has his way. Amen. Right in the middle of the message today, uh, one of our sisters, I don't know, I saw the commotion back there. It looked like she had passed out. And I just uh, stopped ministering from the word and we went immediately into prayer and uh, in just a matter of a few moments uh, she was back 
and we just praised God and kept on with the message. So God is going to always do his thing. And if, uh, if you're not in shape for a blessing today, and uh, you can sit there and be left out. But somebody's going to be blessed. Amen. Amen. Anybody in here going to say it? I know it's going to be me. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. And according to your faith, so be it. The Apostle Paul here is doing something that is unique to all of his writings. He employs a word that is found nowhere else in all of the Pauline epistles. That is the word victory. Now the word victory, although uh, we see much in the Old and New Testament as it relates to the struggles of God's people, but in the King James Version of the Holy Bible, you will not find the word victory written but 12 times. 12 times in the whole of the scripture. Paul uses the word three times. And all three times in this one paragraph. You can read all the rest of Paul's writings, but nowhere else does he use the word victory. Well, the word victory is truly a precious word in that the word victory denotes the final conquest. That when you are in a battle or in a war, in a struggle, when it is finally resolved and you come out on top, then you are truly experiencing victory. Paul uses the word in relationship to three very definite and how shall I say that powerful foes or forces against mankind. First of all, he uses it here in verse 54. Death is swallowed up in victory. Verse 55, the question is asked of the grave, where is your victory? Then in verse 56, he talks about the sting of death is sin. But finally in verse 57, again, he says, thanks be unto God, which giveth us the victory. So we have victory over sin. We have victory over death. And we have victory over the grave. Now if God through Jesus Christ has given us victory over sin, victory over death, and victory over the grave, why should we worry about these little no consequence kind of battles? Because God has given us the victory over the big ones. <laughs> Amen. Oh, when you read the history of sin and what sin has done to the human family. There's a song they used to sing that sin is to blame for it all. Heartaches, pain, hopes that are vain, sin is to blame for it all. Most of the homes that are broken True, some of them are broken uh, over things that uh, really could have easily been resolved. But so many homes are broken up over the fact that here is one who cares more about indulging in liquor, in drugs, in the so time life of so called life of pleasure than he cares about supporting the family. Behind it all, now, I know nowadays we, we live in this euphemistic day, and uh, there's always a sulfur term. When I was a little boy growing up, 
the man or woman who spent all that time boozing, drinking liquor, we thought it was a sin problem. But now we've learned that uh, there's no sin connected with it. It's just a uh, sickness. It's an illness. Uh, even now the man that used to be the undertaker, he, he's the mortician now. Uh, he's still the undertaker. <laughs> I don't care what you call it, it's yet the same thing. This world is in terrible shape. The history of the world. One tragedy after another brought about as a result of sin. Some people said, you know, I, sin is such a problem that even in most pulpits, you never hardly hear a preacher talk about sin. I was listening uh, the other day and I heard a, a minister say that uh, he does not anymore in the wedding ceremony uh, use the word obey. No longer do they ask the uh, bride to be to obey her husband because uh, he said, I know you're not going to do it anyhow. <laughs> and uh, I never will forget I was performing a marriage ceremony. I won't say who it was, uh, but right in the middle of it when I asked her, you know, before she said, I do, if you'll do blah, 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 and obey your husband, she turned around, Mama, you said I wouldn't have to say that. <laughs> but I'll tell you all now that if I uh, perform a wedding, uh, regardless of what your beliefs are, the Bible says that the man is supposed to provide, hello, Amen. and uh, he that does not provide for his own, especially they of his own house, has denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. So whether he does it or not, if I perform the marriage, he's going to promise to do it. Uh, the Bible says that the woman is supposed to obey regardless to what this world says. So when I perform the ceremony, I'm going to say that. And uh, you all want one of the new ceremonies, you get somebody else to do it. Uh, but what has happened now, because most church folk no longer believe in living a life above sin. You don't even hear many preachers preach about sin anymore. They take the position that after you get through shouting and dancing and talking in tongues, that it's not going to be much difference in your lifestyle now than it was then. Uh, I believe that God yet holds us responsible to preach his word and leave it up to you whether you're going to live it. Oh, that was just a little detour. But sin has conquered look like mankind and he's sticking his tentacles into the church. And now you have believers that don't mind shouting and dancing, but they don't feel that the Lord requires that they live a life that is above the sinner. But if Jesus could not give me the power to live a higher life than the sinner, then I don't need him. But when he comes in, he gives you the power to live a victorious life. So he has given us victory over sin. He has even given us victory over death. You understand that while Jesus was upon this earth, he did not refer to death 
in the same terms as other folk. When Lazarus was sick and Jesus did not go immediately to see about him, he waited a couple of days and then he told his disciples, let's go and see Lazarus now. He's asleep. Master, if he sleepeth, he doeth well. And the Lord used the word death in order that they might understand what he was talking about. But the Lord wanted us to know that even though Paul in this 15th chapter of 1 Corinthians calls death our enemy, and he is the last enemy to be destroyed. He is an enemy to the body. But although death is an enemy to the body, those who have put trust and confidence in God, we don't even have to fear death because God has given us victory over death. That victory in many instances extends our material life. Uh, I just looked over here again on, in, in the wing and saw Brother Elmer Flowers sitting there next to his wife. And it, it wasn't but maybe, what, a couple of months ago? Uh, somewhere at least a month or so ago. Uh, he was in the hospital and uh, Elder Askew uh, who is employed by me to make the hospital visits and many other things and assist in me, called and uh, one day I even talked to uh, Sister Flowers herself. They had said he wasn't going to make it through the night. They had counted him out. But we didn't pay any attention to what the doctor said just like we don't ever pay any attention to what the doctor says. <laughs> now, now, don't get me wrong. I'm not talking about we ignore medical advice, but I'm talking about at those points when the doctor says that this is it, they have a matter of hours or a matter of minutes. We hold that God has sovereignty and he can overrule us at any time and bring unto himself that individual that's lying there at what we call the point of death. But our position is that if you're hooked up to the ventilators and life support and no matter what, that as long as there is any semblance of life, this God that we serve, that expressed himself through his son Jesus Christ, not only can he raise one up off of what is called a deathbed while life is still there? Hallelujah. He proved when he raised Jairus' daughter that if you're dead in your bed, I can raise you. And he proved at the city limits of that little village called Nain that you may be between home and the cemetery, but I can raise you. And then at Lazarus's burial ground, he proved that if you're in the grave stinking for four days, I can raise you. So if I can raise you after you crossed over, no matter what shape you're in here, it's not too hard for God. Glory to God. They used to sing, I know the late Bishop J.O. Patterson, they used to sing a lot at Pentecostal Temple that if your problem is too hard for you, say it's what? It's just right for God. You ought to turn to somebody and tell them your problem may be too hard for you, but it's just right for God. Oh, you don't hear what I'm saying. He gives victory over sin. He gives victory over death. And I, I'm getting ready to quit. But what I'm trying to get you to see today is that it doesn't matter what your problem is. He up here worrying about a bill. Lord, I need $517.18. What is $517.18 to a God who has power over death? 
Lord, the doctor said that I got cancer. What is cancer? To a God that has given victory over the grave. Lord, 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 I got, I got, I can't help it. I got a drug habit and a monkey on my back is so big it's about to turn into a gorilla. What is a drug problem to a God who gives victory over the whole gamut of sin? You ought to look at somebody and ask them, do you know who you are? Hallelujah. If you know who you are, you know you got victory. Victory over sin. Victory over death. Victory over the grave. That also includes victory over sickness. Victory over disease. Victory over death. Victory over chemical dependence. Victory over domestic problems. Victory over conflicts in the workplace. I am a victor. Because Jesus has given me victory. See, I, I like the way that thing is worded. But thanks. See, that verse begins with the conjunction but. And anytime the conjunction but comes in, that means you're about to see the reverse of what went in front. When you use the conjunction and, you know you're going to get more a continuation of what was already there. And so and so. And you're just stacking up the same thing. However, when you come to that conjunction, but, that means the whole situation is turning around. Sin is great. Sin has plagued mankind. Sin has brought down great civilizations. Sin caused Sodom and Gomorrah to be burned to a cinder pile. Sin destroyed the Babylonian and the Egyptian empire. But there's one who has victory over sin. You all don't hear what I'm saying. Death has brought down mighty men. As great as death is, but there's one who's got victory over death. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. The grave has a history of saying, once I grab you, you'll never get out of here. Jesus used Lazarus just as an example to show what was going to happen later. When he called Lazarus out, didn't but one have victory over the grave? That was Lazarus. But when Jesus came out, 500 of the Old Testament saints lined up and came out behind him, saying to you and me, you don't even have to fear the grave any longer. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. But thanks be unto God. You may be going through a great struggle, but thanks be unto God who giveth us the victory. Now turn to somebody and tell them, the victory comes from God. The victory comes from God. Now, you, you don't have to be a trained fighter. Hallelujah. I looked over there and see Sister Louise Morgan. Amen. She's another one. It's been a few years ago since we thought she was a goner. She didn't have but days or hours to live. That's been years ago. <laughs> Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Now, I'm not, I'm not giving you TV examples that you will never meet. I'm talking about examples you got right here in your own church. I'm trying to close this. But thanks be unto God who giveth us the victory through Jesus Christ. I mentioned, and I'm, I'm going to close, I mentioned this morning that, you know, back in the mid-40s, and I'm just a little boy at that time, but television, uh, Deacon Cole, I'm sure you remember that, <laughs> was making its debut. 
See, these young folk don't remember the world without television. But we remember around 47 or so when television first came on the commercial market. They didn't have a whole lot of stuff. So on Saturday, the children, we waited to see the cowboy movies. You know, Tom Mix and Hopalong Cassidy. And, and there was always some poor person, a poor family that the outlaws were beaten up on. And those people were powerless against those strong outlaws. But here come Tom Mix, a hop along Cassidy. The good guy always rode on a white horse. I think they must have copied that out of the Bible because Jesus rode on the white horse and he had the on his thigh an inscription written, King of kings and Lord of lords. Well, that family out there in the desert somewhere and nobody to defend them and hear the outlaws beating up on them until here comes the hero. Jesus said, you don't have to worry about the struggles that this life gets you into. God the Father said, I'm sending you victory. And that victory is going to be accomplished by the one on the white horse, Jesus. Thanks be unto God who giveth us the victory. How? Not through your ability to fight. You're in a mess on your job and folk cussing you out. And, and you think the way to beat them is to out curse them. Remember, your victory is not going to come through you know how your victory is going to come through your Lord if Jesus is your Lord and Savior God is sending you victory by Jesus Christ well the devil is is the is the one leading outlaws and he's got all of his demons he got all of his diseases he's got all of his problems he's got all of his imps that he has released from the pit of hell to come and to fight against you and they are pounding you from one side to another but one day you found out that when I came to Jesus I didn't just walk up and shake a preacher's hand and have my name signed in a book I enlisted a heavenly hero and now I don't have to worry about victory the victory is mine and it's mine through Christ Jesus. You ought to tell somebody, if Jesus is the victor over sin, over death, and over the grave, your little problem ain't nothing. Pardon my grammar, but it ain't nothing. Sitting up here like you lost your mother, your father, and all your sisters and brothers and your best friend all in one day. Why? You have victory. Another thing you notice, you're sitting there watching television and you get in absorbed into one of these two-hour movies. And sometimes you've got some familiar actors or actresses and you know who they are and you know that that actor or that actress is the star of the program and if that movie started at eight o'clock you know that at five minutes to ten that the chief character in that story is going to come out on top now you can get absorbed in it and at 9 15 oh how are they gonna get out of that and if you don't watch yourself you get tense and oh boy they, they in a mess but all you got to do is look at your watch in 45 minutes they'll be out you don't hear what i'm saying i'm 
trying to tell you that through Jesus Christ, you are determined to have victory on the end. So don't get upset now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I don't know what you're going through now. You may be 45 minutes into it. You may be an hour and 15 minutes into it. You may be an hour and 30 minutes into it. But within the next 25 minutes, you know how it's going to end. Hey, I read the end of the chapter. Glory to God. God is in control. Jesus is the hero and God's going to send him to rescue me out of whatever I'm in. I got the victory. Somebody ought to leap to your feet and say, thank God. I got the victory. Hey. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, bless his name. Well, sit down, y'all, sit down. I was getting ready. I was getting ready to call folk down this morning for special prayer, those who are involved in struggles. And the Lord said, spoke in my spirit just as definitely. Say, they don't have to get up and go down and pray if they believe my word. So instead of praying, anybody came in here today with a struggle? I don't know whether it's at home, on the job, in the classroom, in your finances, in your body, in your mind. Instead of asking God for anything, I just want you to get up and go up and down these aisles and tell about 10 folk, I got the victory! the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. As we just keep praising God, that was 
someone from Chicago that had come and wanted me to lay hands on them. Where are you? Hallelujah. Where are you? I'm trying to see where they are. Come on and praise God. All right, somebody's going to have to point out to him. I saw a lot of hands up. It can't be in all those different areas. All right, somebody don't let me know. We're just going to accept it for what it is right now. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, lift up those hands and thank God for victory. Glory to Jesus. Now, as we do so many times, I want you to just reach over and lay your hand on somebody and tell them in the name of Jesus, be healed, be delivered, and be set free. Come on, tell two more people that. In the name of Jesus, be healed, be delivered, and be set free. Coming up for now. What did you want to hear? All right. Just remain here. Well, the door of the church is open. Come on, come on, come on. Somebody else. The door of the church is open. Hallelujah. Somebody else that want to make this your church home. Uh, somebody that needs to be saved. Get on up and come now. all just to go with Elder William Thompson and he's going to find out exactly what each one of you need and minister to you. Yes. Elder Thompson. He wants to find out what you want. <laughs> God bless you. All right. Come on and give the Lord a hand. Come on, give the Lord another hand of praise. Now deacons are coming and we're going to worship the Lord in the ministry of giving. Hallelujah. This is the last day 
as well as the last Sunday in this